Good morning <laughs> and Good morning. welcome and welcome to Locust Grove United Church of Christ in York. Please join me in the call to worship. Rejoice, folks. Jesus is in our midst. Be us, Jesus, and fill us with hope. Be glad, friends. Jesus has bread and fish to spare. Free us, Jesus, from the pursuit of food that does not satisfy. Sing for joy, people of God. God gathers up the pieces of our lives that nothing may be lost. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our opening prayer. God of our hopes and dreams, we are empty and long to be filled. We are hungry and long to be fed. We are lost and long to be found. Gather us into your love and pick up the pieces of our lives, just as Jesus gathered up the fragments of the five loaves and two fish that remained after feeding the 5,000. Call us anew to eat our fill and to find our true nourishment in Jesus, the bread of heaven, in whose name we pray, amen.
this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. A prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glory, glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Our gospel lesson is from John chapter 6, verses 1 through 21. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed it to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather up the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is a prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Jesus walks on the water. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I. Don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. This ends the lesson for today. Peace be to God. And let us go before the Lord in prayer. 
Gracious God, how wonderful it is to sit in this house of worship today and hear the birds chirping outside, the music that they make for us, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together today. And we ask that through your Holy Spirit, you would speak to our hearts today through the words of Scripture and through the words you have given me. And may all that we do and all that we say bring you honor and glory and praise. For we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. When our daughter Stephanie was about four or five years old, she brought home some material she had gotten in her Sunday school class one week. And there was a section in this material for the parents to read that had been written by the editor. And it contained a story of a time when she and her children were on a trip to California. As they were driving one day, her youngest child asked her if God was bigger than the Golden Gate Bridge. As she was trying to explain how big God was, one of her older children joined in the conversation and said that God is so big you bump into him everywhere. And I remember thinking, that is such a great definition of how big God is. And I like the image it brought to mind, that we bump into God everywhere. The disciples, well, they were bumping into God every day that they walked with Jesus, whether they realized it or not. They were bumping into God when they sat next to Jesus and listened to him teach and watched him heal. And they even bumped into God on that crowded mountain so long ago when Jesus asked them a question, but they just didn't realize it. We are told in the Gospel of John that the Passover was near and many people had come to be a part of. Perhaps that is why there was such a large crowd there that day. So when Jesus saw the large crowd gathering, he asked Philip where they could buy bread to feed all of those people. We are told that Jesus was just testing him. He already knew what he was going to do. And poor Philip, well, he failed the test. <laughs> he automatically went to the practical, figuring out how long one would have to work to be able to feed that many people. Poor Philip didn't realize that he was bumping into God on that mountain that day. Andrew didn't either. For when he brought the boy over with the small five barley loaves and the two fish, he also got practical, imagining that it wouldn't go very far. Now I know there's nothing wrong with being practical. We all live our lives that way every single day. We have to put food on the table in our homes and we have things to get done. We need to be practical too. But these men, were bumping into God every day when they walked with Jesus. They saw him turn water into wine and heal numerous people. They heard his teachings, yet they couldn't understand who he was. So Jesus just let them both speak, and then he got to work, having everyone sit down. He took the bread and the fish, gave thanks, and then he distributed them. This story of the feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle story that is found in all four Gospels. It must have been very important to the writers of the Gospel and the Church. The fact that it was repeated tells us it was probably a favorite story to share. After all, it isn't every day you get to share a story about the feeding of so many people in such a unique way. Of course, we know that women and children were not counted that day, so it might have been more like 10,000 people gathered on that mountain. Whenever I have researched for this story, I'm drawn by the many different views that are, there are in the commentaries that I read, 
on how this miracle happened. Few, if any, that I have read believe that Jesus did a miracle here on his own or at all. Many believe that, that when the people saw the little boy offer his bread and his fish to the people to feed them, that others would have shared what they had as well. That when the basket of bread and fish were shared, some would take a little and others would add, would have added some to the basket. And that is why there would have been so many leftovers, 12 basketfuls. Well, I believe that people could have done that. I also believe that Jesus did a miracle that day. I'm not sure if as in other Bible stories that the basket never emptied as even after people took some bread or fish and that was why there was always some to feed the people. Not having been there, I'm not quite sure how it happened, but I believe that the God who raised Jesus from the dead multiplied bread and fish and people ate all they wanted and that there were leftovers. The question is, what do you believe? A few weeks ago, we talked about, about how small, our, if our God is too small. Today, we are asking, <coughs> excuse me, how big our God is. And I think this story gets us to grapple with that question again. Is our God too small? Is God so big we bump into God everywhere? Is God big enough that God can handle the struggles you and I face in our lives? Is God big enough to do a miracle or two today? I think we all have days and we feel like our troubles and struggles are so big and we might even wonder at times if, they're, if God is big enough to handle them. So we get busy trying to solve a problem without even praying about it. We get practical, but not spiritual, and I think we need both. I know there are times I try to encourage a resident at the nursing home and remind them that God is with them and able to help them, and often I hear them say, oh, I hope so. For some people, the doubts begin to surface, and they wonder if God can handle what's going on in life. Well, that's when I go to the third chapter of Ephesians, and I read the passage we heard from there today. I remember just how wide and long, how high and deep is the love of Christ, how his love is bigger than I can wrap my mind around, that it's a love that sent him to the cross and made sure he rose again. It's a love I feel when I remember that he walks with us every day, a love we bump into. And then I think of the Apostle Paul, who went through so much in his life as a missionary for Christ. He faced things we can't even imagine, and yet God did miracles through him, and God enabled him to keep on preaching and teaching. He was persecuted against placed in prison, left for dead, and much more. Yet God worked through him over and over so that he could keep on sharing the message of Christ's love. Paul could have thrown in the towel and left it all behind, wondering why he had to suffer and struggle so much, wondering why he had not only had a thorn in his side, but many other problems that followed him everywhere he went. He could have been practical and decided it wasn't worth the cost, but he didn't. For he knew that Jesus was with him wherever he went, and that was enough for him. So he wrote verse 20 of the third chapter of Ephesians, those beautiful, inspiring words. Now unto him who is able to do a Measurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his purpose that is at work within us. I just love that verse because it reminds me just how big God is. My God is big enough to do more, immeasurably more than I can imagine, more than I can measure. 
The disciples didn't realize that, did they? Perhaps it was too early in their story, their time with Jesus. But it isn't too early for you and me. Even though we may doubt or have struggles in our faith from time to time, it is my prayer that we know that God is with us and working through us, that we are bumping into God everywhere. I like what Pastor Barbara Brown Taylor says about this story. She writes, what Jesus knew beyond a shadow of a doubt was that wherever there was plenty of God, there would be plenty of everything else. Perhaps I could paraphrase that. Jesus knew that wherever we are bumping into God, which is everywhere, there is plenty of everything else, everything we need. So what do we learn from this familiar story today? That we go to Jesus first, and we also do what we can to help as we allow God to work through us, knowing that our God is big enough to do whatever needs to be done. I will always read this story seeing what Jesus did that day, but I will also remember to offer what I can so he can do more through me. How big is my God? So big that I bump into God everywhere. How about you? Amen. <coughs> we have a birthday to celebrate today, Cole Schenberger. So on the count of three, we'll say happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Cole. <coughs> have a few um, prayer requests. Of course, we want to keep those in the West dealing with the fires in our prayers. I know they're starting to get some contained, but some of them are pretty much still out of control. So pray for the firefighters and the people living there. And the flooding in China, and I know they're still dealing with a lot in Europe from the floods they had last week as well. <coughs> we spoke with our son yesterday, and uh, just asked if you would keep his girlfriend Janelle in your prayers. She's not feeling very well. And our grandson got that RSV, it's a respiratory thing that kids are getting, and he was pretty sick yesterday. By evening, the medicine was working a little better, but I guess it's going around in daycare centers, so when it rains, it pours, and they've had a lot. <laughs> and Joanne asked that we would keep her in our prayers. She's having some health issues right now. And Jeff asked that we would pray for his sister, Shirley, who is also having some health problems. And I was told to mention we're blessed today by Danny Seitz, saying just to think about how blessed we are every day. What a blessing that God is with us, that we're bumping into God, right? <laughs> And Diane said she has a celebration after four months of looking for a job. Her son got one. So yay, that's a wonderful celebration. And I'm sure Mildred would appreciate some prayers for a health problem she's dealing with. So let's keep Mildred in our prayers. And also Joanne, right? Yeah, let's pray for Mildred and Joanne as well.
Oh, it's neat to add Zach's playing as a blessing. So beautiful. Well, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, I guess we don't take much time in our daily lives thinking about how big you are and how much you can do. But imagine we all at times have doubts in certain situations in our lives when we're struggling, when we're going through difficult times. But that doesn't mean you're not big, you're not here with us. We don't always understand why things are handled differently at times. But I believe with all my heart that you are always, always with us. And that you always hear our prayers, you always answer them, Lord. And that you are big enough to do a miracle on a hillside with some bread and fish and able to do miracles in our lives as well. Now there are days we struggle. Look at all the Apostle Paul went through. And you didn't change his situation. You just gave him what he needed to go through what he was going through. You gave him what he needed, Lord. And sometimes we want things fixed and gone and taken care of. But we just have to rely on you and trust in you. And know that you are walking with us every single day. No matter how that day turns out, that you are with us. I love that definition, Lord, that we can bump into you, that you are with us always. Maybe that will remind us even more that you are here. Thank you for the words of the Apostle Paul reminding us how great the love of Christ is, how wide and long and high and deep. It's amazing. And we cannot even imagine, we can't measure all that you can do. And we don't want to get in the way, but we want to offer ourselves to you and the gifts you've given to us, Lord, like that boy did when he offered the fish and the loaves. We want to offer ourselves to you. Use us, Lord, for your kingdom, for the purposes you have that we can continue like the Apostle Paul, sharing the love of Christ, being a witness, and allowing you to work through us. Thank you for being big, Lord. Thank you for being with us. And we thank you today for Cole's birthday, and we ask that you would just bless him, Lord, on his birthday this week. Hope you have a wonderful day. We pray for those dealing with the fires in the West Coast and in Canada. We just pray, Lord, for rain. We pray for rain to come, for the fires to be contained, for the firefighters to be safe. We pray for those involved in the, who've lost so much in the floods in China and Europe, for lives that were lost. We pray for family members. And we pray for those who are dealing with all that happened there. I ask that you would be with, with Janelle and help her to get feeling better, Lord, and that you would be with my grandson, Ledger, as he deals with that respiratory infection. Work through the medicine, Lord, and, and heal the other children as well in his daycare. We pray for so many states that are dealing with the COVID variant, and we just pray, Lord, that we get a handle on this and that we wouldn't have to hear about it anymore. We lift up Joanne, who's dealing with health issues, and we pray for healing for her and for Mildred and, and our other Joanne, that you would bless them, her both as well. We pray for Jeff's sister, Shirley, who is dealing with some health issues, and we pray for help in that situation. And we thank you, Lord, that we are blessed in so many, many ways, Lord. We do often take it for granted, but... The blessing we have most of all is that you are with us in all the ways that you touch our lives and move through us. And we thank you, Lord, for Diane's son, who after four months of looking for a job has gotten one, and we pray it is a wonderful one. 
and that everything goes well for him, that it's exactly what he wanted, his blessing, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for bringing us here today to worship. So let us join together in the prayer which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, <clears throat> and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Bible tells us that God loves a cheerful giver, and I know we have a lot of cheerful givers in this church. All the things that were on the pews last week for the children, for the generosity of the offerings, so we have a wonderful, generous church. So let us join together now in our offertory prayer. God of abundant love, in you nothing is lost. Gather our offerings as Jesus gathered up the baskets of leftover food. Gather our efforts as Jesus gathered the hopes of the people who look for a true king. Gather our service as Jesus gathered people to God's heavenly banquet. Bless the offerings we have gathered that nothing may be lost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. If anyone would like to be a, a lay reader, of course, let Linda or myself know. And and I saw another bag in my office of dresses. This is wonderful. My daughter's been putting some gorgeous pictures of dresses on Facebook. So if you go to the Sparrow Place Facebook page, you'll see, oh my golly, some gorgeous dresses that they're going to be selling on September 11th. It's wonderful. And it says here in our bulletin, if anyone finds or has found a black onyx button pierced earring, please return to Jean McKinley. And um, this is a wonderful thing to share. <clears throat> $225 plus all the food on the two pews was donated to Kids Cafe. Sandy will have a detailed report later. Isn't that wonderful? That is just a joy to share that. I always say we're small but mighty. <laughs> that is wonderful. And our last announcement is there is a Go Green Sunday, August 8th, from 1 to 3 at Mount Zion, UCC. And there's a, a notice on, outside my office that tells you all about that. So let's join now in our bullets and our benediction. As you go into the coming week, May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you come to know how wide, how long, how high, and how deep God's love for you really is. And may we know that Jesus truly is the bread of life as he meets us where we are and feeds our very souls. All glory to God who is able to accomplish infinitely more than we would ever dare to ask or imagine. Amen. God bless. Okay. <laughs>